So if you've been watching Mixed Up, you'll have seen me wearing Chinese traditional clothes a few times. <laughs> Is it a good look? But in this episode, I'm actually going to talk about the Hun Fu trend and why it's such a thing in China now. And also show you some footage from when I went and did a traditional Chinese photo shoot in Shanghai last year. So in China, there's this revival or trend at the moment of wearing hanfu. Hanfu is the traditional clothing of the Hun ethnicity group. So there's this theory that the hanfu trend started around 2001 when there was this APEC meeting of world leaders in Shanghai. George Bush and John Howard and Putin were all wearing Chinese clothes, but these clothes were more Manchurian style. So the last Chinese dynasty was the Qing dynasty and it was ruled by an ethnic group that's actually from the north of China, the Manchurians. And during that time, Hun culture was kind of repressed. So men would shave their heads and have the long ponytail, which is a Manchurian style. So then online, there was this big debate about why, you know, the world sees Chinese clothing as, as the Manchurian style and not the Hun style. And then a little later in 2003, this man named Wang Le Tian, who was an electrician, not a celebrity or anything, he was just an electrician, and he wore Hun Fu down the street in Zhengzhou. That was kind of the starting point for this movement to kind of grow and move into pretty much all the major cities of China. So it's kind of a controversial trend actually because the Han ethnicity group is the majority um, ethnicity group in China. So there's this idea that wearing Hun clothing has implications on ethnic diversity in China. But then on the other hand, you have people saying, no, it's just an aesthetic thing and they just love how the clothes look. And also that it's a reaction to periods of Chinese history, like the Cultural Revolution, when people actually couldn't express themselves through their clothing. There are also some people in China who really want to revive these clothes for sort of everyday fashion. So those people are a bit more hardcore and they'll wear the clothes to work or, you know, on the metro. There are lots of places now where you can go and do a photo shoot dressed in Hanfu clothing and you get these super, super, super airbrushed photos um, that look, well, kind of amazing to be honest. So last year I was living in Shanghai and I went out to a place called Songjiang which is in the outer, outer, outer suburbs of Shanghai. I think someone had cornered me in a shopping mall the day before and shown me all these pictures of, of these different looks that they could do and I just kind of caved and booked this photo shoot because I mixed people kind of just, I don't know, they just don't even think that I'm Chinese at all. And I know there's been a lot of comments on these videos as well about me looking like all these different things. So I thought, okay, I'll go and I'll do this photo shoot where I'm wearing Hun Chinese clothing. You know, maybe I'll look really, really Chinese and then I can use those pictures for castings and whatever comes up. Well, it took a while to find the place first because it was in this... It was like kind of in like an industrial park or something and no one really seemed to know where it was. Really hoping this is the right place. Oh, here we go. This feels more like it. They give you this book to look through, you kind of choose the styles you want to do. Some of them are hanfu, but others are just, I feel like they're costumes that they just made up for photo shoots. So there was one where I think a woman had a, like a fox on her head. I kind of regret not getting the fox, fox photo now. And then you go into hair and makeup and they completely transform you. I did three different looks and I think it cost me sort of less than $150. And one of the reasons why these places are so popular now is that a lot of people will go and get traditional Chinese photos taken for their wedding. And then I did this third one that was apparently the concubine style. And the kind of the rappy thing really reminded me of in Chinese costume dramas, if any of you have seen things like Empresses in the Palace, when they brought the concubines to the emperor, they would be inside, like wrapped inside a massive blanket, like a human burrito. And that's kind of what 
I felt like in the in the yellow outfit. I felt like I was being one of those um, human burritos and like delivered to an emperor. The photographer at the place that I went to, he kind of really knew what he wanted and I got the impression that there was no possible way that I could improvise and do kind of my own poses. So he was basically telling me exactly, exactly where to place my hand and exactly how to move my fingers. And then he had this assistant who I kind of felt bad for because he was making her just run around and do all these ridiculous things. And then he was getting frustrated at her whenever she ended up being in the photo. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair though, he has this system and his system totally works because the photos do look incredible. So, you know, who am I to say that I could have done any better if I'd been able to move around freely. So yeah, the next day I went back to choose what photos I wanted to actually buy and have airbrushed. My hands look really creepy in the retouched photos. They look like um, like Barbie hands and they're very smooth, which kind of freaks me out. Still haven't been cast in a Chinese costume drama. It's fine, it's fine. I'm here if anyone, you know, if anyone's looking for someone, I'm here, I've got some photos. I can be the human burrito. So I'm back in Tasmania now in Australia and I recently met this guy who actually runs a Hun Fu society in Tasmania and he let me go along and film their first Hun Fu party. So the next episode will be all about that. You'll be able to see me dressing up in some Hun Fu in Tasmania of all places. Hun Fu's everywhere. So I've been watching all these videos recently about how to be better at YouTube and all of them say that I should be telling you to subscribe to my channel. So I'm going to do that now. Please subscribe to my channel if you've been enjoying Mixed Up. There should be a button down there saying subscribe. And also Mixed Up has an Instagram account if you haven't seen it already. Um, I'll, put the, I'll put it somewhere here. So you can see what it is. And on there I often post infographics about um, festivals or just different topics that I haven't been able to explore in a full video yet. So subscribe and follow me on Instagram. Thank you